What's up everybody, it's Nerp here once again, and today I'll be showing you all my top 10 energy scrolls. In case you missed my top 10 growth scrolls video from last week, click the annotation on the screen to watch that video first. As you may remember from the growth video, I ranked these scrolls in terms of their strength in proportion to the cost it takes to play them. The most competitive energy decks are composed of the following 10 scrolls because these are the most valuable energy scrolls. Unlike growth, there are more variations of competitive energy decks. You usually come across either a structure energy deck or a more aggressive ranged creature energy deck. Both are potent but feature a few different scrolls. Energy has a plethora of removal, lots of high health structures, and a lot of range attacking creatures up its sleeve. Many people consider energy to be the, weak the weakest of the four factions in scrolls at the moment due to its somewhat weak creatures, lack of card draw, and weakness versus growth decks. I think that it is severely underrated and can be deadly once it gets board control. As I said last time, I rank these scrolls using my own knowledge, experience, and opinions of the game, so I encourage you to comment below and tell what your rankings would look like if you disagree with me. Now let's get on with the rankings, shall we? Number 10. Coming in at number 10 is the Storm Runner. Stormrunner is a 3 cost energy creature that has 2 attack, 2 countdown, and 3 health. Its trait is Lobber, which means that instead of attacking in a straight line, one creature or whatever, um, it's like a Mangonel or a Destroyer as it attacks 4 spaces. It makes kind of like a diamond shape, so it will attack all 4 of those spaces with 2 attack, or you can make that much higher with a certain enchantment that you'll see later in the video but so storm runner puts pressure on about every space on the opponent's board because he's one step away from attacking it because his attacking range is so large although it only has two attack like i said it's easily buffed and um versus growth he is very strong because growth is a lot of small health creatures so he'll be able to destroy a bunch of them with one attack. This guy will never do any idle damage being a lobber, but he is very valuable in energy decks. Number 9 Coming in at number 9 on my countdown is Cannonetta. Like Stormrunner, it is a 3 cost um, energy creature with 2 attack, 2 countdown, and 3 health. But the traits that both of them have make them very different. Cannonetta has two traits, piercing and range attack. Range attack, uh, very common in energy decks. All it means is that the creature, well range attack means it's attacking with not melee. So that means that it won't take damage from like attacking like spiky, spiky things like ill thorns and spearmen. Also it can like blow up like mines without stepping on them. So that's, that's always helpful. And that gives it synergy with uh, ranged energy decks with Bombard and stuff. And the piercing trait is much more interesting. That means that it's kind of like a pseudo relentless. It lets you um, like kill multiple creatures at once. So that means that however much damage Cannonetta deals to the creature it attacks, half of that damage dealt to that creature is also dealt to the creature behind it and then half of that damaged creature behind it is dealt to the creature behind that and that just keeps going until it hits an idle or it runs out of damage to half so since Cannonetta just starts with two attack that means that if it attacks a creature that's, that creature would take two damage and the creature behind that or idle would take one damage so as you can guess um, put a couple attack buffs on this guy and she will plow through roll, plow through rows just like a relentless creature would, because then that damage would keep having, but it would still be pretty high. So, piercing is a very strong uh, trait, and that's why Cannonetta makes a spot on this list. Number eight. Violent dispersal is a six-cost energy scroll. It is a spell that simply says destroy target unit that is exactly what it does you just 
cast the spell, click on um, a unit on your on uh, click on a unit anywhere on the board, and that unit will be destroyed. So this um, is a very reliable removal card for energy. It does cost six, so it is very pricey, and you usually won't be um, destroying an opponent cr an opponent unit that cost um, costs as much as you did to get rid of it that costs six or more. But even with you paying more, that creature that he has could be heavily enchanted. It could just be a huge throw of the board, and getting rid of it would be your best move. So it is countered by a card called Untainted, which means if you enchant you with Untainted, then it cannot be targeted with spells such as Violent Dispersal. But other than that, this is a card for energy players that could just instantly destroy any threat on uh, your on the opponent's side of the board and gain back some board control and just it, it's very versatile it kills those one countdown harvesters those wings captains and all those scary things that you want to get rid of number seven Thunder Surge is a 6 cost energy spell that you choose a target unit and that unit takes 2 damage and all connected units to that unit will take 2 damage as well. So you can do mass damage with this thing but it is a little unreliable because it's very easy to play around because your opponent can just move its creatures around and play around it. But the potential for this scroll to really do a lot of damage, especially versus growth, because then you'll be able to really just make things, um, make all their little creatures die, is the potential for that to happen is just too good to keep this out of your deck. That's why Thunder Surge comes in at number seven. Number six. Bombard is a 3 cost energy scroll that is a spell. What it does is when you play it, all units on the battlefield with ranged or lobber have their countdown decreased by 2. So this is kind of like a rally from growth, but it only works on ranged creatures, which is very good for energy because energy has almost all ranged creatures and not much of uh, melee creatures. But you have to notice that it says that just all units with Ranger Lobber have their countdown decreased by 2, which means also the enemy units with Ranger Lobber will be decreased by 2. So when you're playing against energy with this, sometimes it won't help you as much because then they're getting to attack also. But, and also decay some uh, ranged creatures like the Witch Doctor and Oblivion Seeker and Cursemonger. But this scroll, especially in uh, range energy decks, is like something you never sack because it just lets your guy, all your guys attack. It's and it's only it's less cost than a rally, so it can be much like earlier played than a rally. Then growth can use its rally, and I just I love this girl. Number five. Machine divinator, the staple of every mono energy structure deck. This guy, although he is used exclusively in structure energy decks he places so high on this list because he is what everything revolves around in that deck and he is very good he is only three cost and he is a zero attack one countdown four health creature he does not attack so even if you buff that guy up uh, with higher attack, he still won't attack, so don't try doing that. That one countdown looks deceiving. You can attack every turn if you buff it up, but no, that's not the case. And what he does is, while Machine Divinator is in play, your structure's health is increased by one. So that means that it's pretty self explanatory. If a field full of structures put on Machine Divinator, they all have plus one health. So structures already have a high health, so having that health go even higher makes it very hard to get through. And then his other ability is when Machine Divinator's countdown becomes zero every turn because he has a one countdown, a random structure you control with a countdown one or more has its countdown decreased by one. So that means that uh, if you have a clock library with um, two countdown 
and a machine divinator on the board. When it's your turn, your clock library will blow up and you'll get the scrolls from it because that clock library went down two countdown instead of one normally because the machine divinator helped it go down. So if you get a couple of these guys on the board with a bunch of structures, you're basically unstoppable unless you're facing growth so they can just double quick. But because then the structures will have so much health and your machine divinators will have them like keep uh, going off like the ether pumps will be going off every turn the clock libraries will keep going off and it will be you'll be unstoppable again unless your player the opponent double quakes but that's why machine divinator is number five number four imaginated comes in at number four i'm sure you've seen this enchantment in action already at least a couple times in this countdown. It is uh, very often used on Cannonettas and Storm Runners, and because what it does is you enchant uh, your creature or any creature, and that creature gets plus five attack and a base countdown increased by one. So this is only two cost, and you can immediately just make your creature's attack just be like giant so then you'll be able to kill almost anything and then the drawback of it is your countdown gets increased by one but I think that is a fair trade because it doesn't it's not like a bear paw that uh, increases the countdown by one so if you put it on you won't be able to attack but if you just put that on like a cannon or something the attack will become seven and then you could just plow through a row or a storm runner like I did earlier you could just kill more high health things and it's not like a focus where it will go away after the turn. In three turns, or however long the countdown is, um, the thing will attack again. So for two costs, this card is pretty amazing. And that's why it comes at number four. Number three. Solemn Giant is one cool card. It costs four energy and it is a 8 attack, 6 countdown, 4 health creature. What it does, it's not very normal, it does not count down. Similar to the Harvester, um, every turn this thing won't count down normally. It will stay at 6 unless you do what it can do, which is you pay 2 energy to decrease countdown by 2. This means that if you have six energy laying around you can use that six energy to decrease this guy's countdown to zero and make him attack so theoretically if you um have at least six energy you can put this guy down and he can be a kinfolk brave attacking every single turn with eight attack but he's not relentless so a lot of times you'll just be attacking an idol or something and you could put uh, a machination mindset on him to make him relentless but I don't see that that often. His 4 health um, is decent. He does die pretty easily. At only 4 cost, it's pretty nice. If you have 10 resources, you can make him haste. You can just put him down and use 6 resources to make him attack. So you can... It's a lot of times that wins energy games. If it, see, if it has to just destroy one more idol and has 8 health, you can just get to 10 resources and try to destroy it without the opponent blocking it. So it is... A very cool scroll and the attack animation is just awesome so that's why that comes in at number three number two auto mod forge is a three cost energy structure i'm not sure if you noticed but a lot of it, good energy scrolls are three cost uh energy needs some nice four and five cost uh things that would help the curve more but Aside from that, Automata Forge is a structure, and it has 0 attack, 3 countdown, and 5 health. So, instead of attacking, Automata Forge summons a gun automaton on an adjacent tile. Pay 3 energy to decrease countdown by 1. This ability can be used any number of times per turn. So just like the Solemn Giant, this is like a pump creature. If you have leftover energy, um, this helps because ener energy does not have uh, the faction energy doesn't have great card draw, so a lot of times you'll run out of cards, but you'll still have leftover energy. So you can use that 
to pump into an Automata Forge or a Psalm Giant to produce more gun automatons or make your giant attack. So you uh so this thing every so often you'll get a free gun automaton that will respawn next to it and a gun automaton if you don't know is a two attack two countdown three health ranged attacking creature so it is pretty good um so this uh reminds me a little bit of the brother of the wolf from growth because when the countdown equals zero uh it spawns a gun automaton and when brother of the wolf countdown equals zero you can spawn a, a wolf so this helps energy spam creatures with structure energy. This girl is one of the big reasons that structure energy can win games because it also needs some creatures to shoot those idols. And it's a very good scroll. Works very well with machine divinators and the high health makes it hard to break through. We're on to number one. Drum roll please. Burn is a 4 cost energy spell. It deals 3 damage to target unit, and if that unit is destroyed, draw 1 scroll. I absolutely love this card, because it lets you kill a lot of pretty good things at 3 health, including rod eaters, breakers, braves, there's just a lot of things that you might want to burn. It's a pretty early game card. Oftentimes, when you're playing against energy, you're just like crossing your fingers to not for him not to have a turn four burn to get your rod eater or your uh, kinfolk brave. So burn because the reason it's so good is because not only um, does he kill your unit usually, but he draws one scroll if that unit is destroyed. So it gives you um, immediate card advantage in the early game. It is great removal. It's relatively um, low cost, so it's not it's not too bad. It even combines with like curse and uh, energy decay decks, where you can curse something, can curse two, so you can burn something with five health. And you can burn stuff that has more than three health, and it won't die. You just won't get the card from it. But I think you definitely want to, if you can, you definitely want to use this card to kill a creature and get a card. So. That's why Burn is number one on my countdown. So that was my top ten. What's yours? Leave a comment down below if you agreed, disagreed, and what you would change. I'd love to hear. So next uh, time I'll be doing, I think, the top ten order scrolls. So I'll start working on that. Make sure you leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. So it lets me know that you like these kinds of videos, and uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to be notified when I have future videos. So I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.